Hi friends, so today's project is going to be building a stand for this. Now, I mean, I know, wait a second, you're thinking, hey, the miter saw is on a stand. It is. It's on a fantastic DeWalt DWE 723, DWX 723. It's a great, great miter stand. But I'm missing all this storage down here. Yeah, there's, there's so much room under here, I can crawl under here and lay down if I wanted to. It's kind of dirty and there might be spiders, and I don't like either of those things. So, I'm not going to crawl under there, but I am going to build a stand with wheels, like everything else, that lets this sit up on top of it. So what's going to happen is I'm going to fold the legs up, and then this will just sit up here, and there are actually some little indents, and I think... I can um, bolt, ooh, is that a mosquito? Sure is. Um, I think I can bolt this down with like some wing nuts or something. Um, it's not intended to be on here permanently, but it is intended to come off when I want it to, if I want to take this somewhere, like my shop, which is a real, real strong possibility. Um, but. As a bonus, it will give me some storage space, and one of the challenges I'm facing in my workshop that used to be a garage is, I'm out of work, I'm out of storage space. You know, if this was any tighter, it'd be a commuter airplane. Well, not really. But anyway, so here's a scoop. I'm gonna go for 76 inches tip to tip. These extend out, that won't be a big deal. Um, and I'm going to go for 26 inches high, which is this height. So I'm going to keep the working height the same. And that's going to mean that I'm going to have 23 inches under the wheels. And um, I'm going to go for two feet front to back. And that'll give me, and I'm going to divide it into three compartments. It's going to give me some nice storage space because I got junk. Well, not really. If it was junk, I'd throw it away. I got lots of tools and I got lots of stuff. And I like having places to put stuff. Um, almost as much as I like having stuff on wheels where I can roll it out of the way. So, with that said, let's use this saw to trim down the pieces. So I've got my cut list together. All right, so there are my rudimentary plans and my cut list. So my cut list is right here. And then this is my overhead view, or this is my frame view, and then this is my overall plan. And I apologize if I'm drifting in and out of focus. Um, I don't normally play Vanna White with my um, sketches backwards. Okay, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to cut this the way I'd like, but one of the things I did is I looked at this end of the board being all torn up. So I'm going to flip these around and cut off the side that I think is not ideal. And I don't know if this is gonna go out far enough for me. It's awfully close. Okay, so that sets my height or my length. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make my cut. I um, previously made this stand that the um, miter stand sat on that had wheels on it and um, let me see if I can get this out of here <clears throat> the problem is that the stand is obsolete but I don't want to throw away the metal so what I'm going to do is break it down and I'm actually going to flip it over here So first, I'm going to do what I always do, and I'm going to start some screws.
Okay, it would be far better if I had a bigger assembly table. But I'll just have to suffice. And I'm going to do one screw at each end in order to make sure I've got it lined up. The ground is not exactly level, so I'm going to use my square to help make sure I get everything square. And the easiest way to do this and then we'll back off and check it one more time. There we go. Apparently I'm a little too consistent because I hit a screw. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. No big deal. Now the reason you see me backing away is it's real easy to get this off position. This one will be harder because this has got a lot of mass. Okay. So there's one. Now I need to do the other end. Same game. I'm going to start cutting the pieces that go in the bottom and the beautiful part about this is they're not real special. So it looks like it's 26 by whatever the length is. Go ahead and get these screwed in. That's why I hate Phillips screwdrivers, because they slip. Fancy, they're just going to be pieces of MDF that are in here. 
because it's not it's not airtight they're not drawers okay so i've cut the end pieces out of scrap and i'm going to go ahead and fasten those on So at this point I have the back on here and what I need to do now is stop and go get some lag bolts so that I can uh, attach the wheels and um, then I can attach the top um, once I have the wheels on it. It'll be much easier to do. Um, so uh, let me go get some lag bolts. I'll be back in a few. Hey, good morning. I uh, took a break last night after I went to Home Depot and found the hardware I needed. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to install the... Um, casters on the bottom, which is that side, and then I'm going to flip it over and put the top on it. So uh, let's do it to it. Let me get it positioned and I'll be right back. Oh, so I've got a bucket of hardware here. And an impact driver and a bit that fits these quarter inch lag screws. So now let's flip it over and watch it roll. Oh man, this thing gets heavier and heavier. Way easier. Just as well, it was headed somewhere else anyway. Put this away. Alright, so at this point I've got the top sized and I need to line it up and I'm gonna line it up so that the back is flush and it overhangs a little bit and it overhangs a little bit on the side that'll be towards the door actually i think i'm gonna back this up just a little i'm gonna eyeball it and make it halfway watched a bunch of my videos you may recall that i complain about phillips head screws all the time so i'm down to just my spax short screws and these go way faster Alright, so the top is fastened on and the wheels are on and the next step is to mount the miter saw. So I did find that this is indeed the front, so it's just hard to adjust. I think that's where I want it. And it would be fine if it didn't stick out on the bottom. So what I've done is I've marked the location I wanted the holes, I've drilled a, set, a hole, and then I've put a blind nut on the back side, and then I have a half inch cut washer and a 3 8 flat um, fender washer to give me some grip, and I have just enough bolt 
to get away with this. So what this will do is it'll go in here like this. And then it'll get tightened down. I'm going to miss truth. So we'll flip this around where it makes for a better show. Nice. So we're getting there. And if I wanted to remove this and take this somewhere else, I would just unscrew those bolts. At this point, I'm going to remount the saw and there's a balance issue that occurs if you mount it backwards where it's easy to adjust. Okay, that looks real good, so we're going to go ahead and screw it down. Well, I'd call that a success. I can't, can't move it. I'm going to make sure it's torqued down a little tighter. So the only disadvantage to four swivel wheels is that it's a little hard to maneuver, but that's okay because it gives me the ability to maneuver in all directions. Which is often useful. I can use it as a bulldozer. So there you go. That is my completed miter saw storage table that uh, mounts a DeWalt DWX723 miter stand with a Hitachi C12 FDH saw onto this custom table. And I still have full use of the miter stand the way I use it. And I get this beautiful table, which I can abuse starting immediately. I have a plug up there. So, you know, thanks for watching. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw some stuff in here. Starting with this, these 2x4s that are cut the wrong size. Eh, that's a little too long. But this needs a home, and it'll fit. And this needs a home. So there you go. It's already being quite useful in getting stuff off, off, up off the floor and into a place where it can be stored. I hope you enjoyed my video. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my videos. And be sure to like my video. And if you have something nice to say, leave a comment.